What is up, people? Today, I think I'm going to start something new. We're going to call it No Script Saturdays. And I'm just going to fucking go off on just insane tangents. And you may say, but hey, fringe content creator, today is Wednesday. And to that, I would probably say, like, fuck you or something. If you were with me, I would try to do some sick martial arts shit. But it wouldn't work, and I would fall down. But um, when I fall down... I get back up again, and you ain't never gonna keep me down. Um, as they say in the lyrics to that one song from the 90s that I don't remember. But it, it, it was inspirational, I will tell you that much. So, today I want to talk a little bit about probation. And it's because I've had a lot of experience with probation. And it's something that I want to talk about, because a lot of people say that it's a trap. It... Basically, it can be a trap depending on where you're at with what you're doing in life and if you're in recovery, if you're on drugs, if you're, you feel like you're done um, living like you were living, or if you just want to not do it for as long as probation is going, then just start doing your thing again. So when I was on probation, or my friend, let's say, um, I was on it when I was very, very young and... I basically at the time I was addicted to opioids and I would try to go and get off them because at the time you could be on Suboxone, but it, or it depends who you had at this time because Suboxone was brand new. Uh, K2 was a thing that was really big, which is uh, synthetic marijuana, which is like basically just like some fucking plants spread with THC that you can smoke, not THC, synthetic cannabinoids, which is j basically... I used to know the actual name of the chemical, um, and I'm going to do a whole fucking video about K2 because holy shit, uh, I have so many crazy stories about that shit. But anyways, so at the time they told me, I basically got a few years probation, but um, because I was very young, but I had a shitload of charges, and so they made my probation very strict, and I had already served jail time on top of this. So basically... I caught a case of probation on a state that I wasn't even living in at the time. So, it, and it was literally like the other side of the United States. And then, fucking on top of that, uh, it was in a county that I wasn't even living in because I was in a sober house on the other side of the fucking state. So, to go see my probation officer, I would have to take a fucking Greyhound bus just to see them. And, uh, and so, I would get drug tested and shit like that. And at the time... Basically, I was on Suboxone, I was doing K2, and I would go down there, and I would piss clean and shit, and so, um, one of the times, I go down there, and I take a drug test, first of all, fucking, uh, on the way back, when you're taking a Greyhound bus, it's just basically, like, a requirement that you have to be on drugs to do that, so, not being on drugs, taking a Greyhound bus is just a fucking huge risk in itself. And I would never recommend that shit ever. And so on the way back, I met some kid and he had an ecstasy pill and he he was rolling. And he, fucking, he was the kid sitting right next to me and he gave me one. And so I was rolling on the way up and I went back to my sober house. They would drug test you like at random all the time. Um, but I didn't pop for that that time. So anyways, I'm at a sober house and when you're at a sober house... They basically can make whatever the fuck rules they want. Literally, they could tell you to do anything and they can kick you out if you don't like it's not like having a when you're renting in a, a property or some shit <coughs> and um, your landlord that like, wants to kick you out. So there's like a process to it. No, they can just kick you out for whatever the fuck they want at any time. And it could be the smallest little infraction. So anyways, I ended up getting kicked out of this sober house. Basically... Not for the tiniest infraction, but because I got caught with K2. And so, basically, what I ended up doing that time is just going down, turning myself in. They sent me to jail, and they're like, hey, all, like most of these charges, we're going to just throw them out on your record, and it's going to fuck up every plan that you have in your whole life. And it's definitely not going to prepare yourself to an endless case of suffering and addiction, even if you fucking move and do all this shit, and uh, stay off drugs, and whatever. So, basically, um, I went to jail, 
I got in really good shape from working out and eating jail foods. And if you go to jail, I really hope that you like fucking the starches because that's like all that you fucking eat. And people say that you can't like blow up and get big off that shit. And my response to that is, are you out of your fucking mind? Have you ever seen people in jail and in prison? They're fucking huge because all that you could do all day is fucking work out, uh, play cards, uh, joke around and catch wreck with each other. Just fucking bullshit or just get into more shit that is completely illegal but it doesn't matter because a lot of the times when you're in there you're thinking with a criminal mentality because that's what you have to do to, to survive in the american prison system or the american jail system or just the penal system in general so okay so a few years later i um ended up getting uh catching more charges because i was addicted to heroin the whole time and in order when you are having to use heroin every day, that's like a pretty decent amount of money. I mean, a lot of people don't even sell bags that are under like $50, uh, $60, a hundred. I know dealers that don't sell more than a hundred. They won't come out for less than a hundred bucks. Um, and I always thought, and I would have like drug dealers that were kind of like middlemen that would sell me shit for like $20. And that basically, um, Usually I would have to get more than that though. So imagine having to do that every single fucking day. And you say, hey, but fringe YouTube creator, why don't you just quit that shit and just stop it and just not do it? And to that I would say, um, okay, fuck you. You got me on that one. But that wasn't something I was willing to do at that time. So uh, I catch more charges. I get uh, put back on probation. And basically I had to go to detox, do all that shit. And then, um, on top of all this, one of the reasons that it's a trap is because you have to pay fines. And the fines aren't cheap, and it's just whatever the fucking judge wants to throw at you. He could be pissed off one day, and be like, uh, yeah, here's fucking, uh, here, you gotta do this, that, and the other, and pay fucking $20,000, or, or some ridiculous shit like that. And so, basically, if you don't have the money to pay that shit, they send you to jail. And when this is something that was important that I didn't mention before. So when you fail a drug test on probation, they could take you in front of the judge and recommend that you do a program or probation or um, extend your probation or just straight go to jail for a couple of days. And then usually whenever they do that, they also extend the probation. So now they see that you're fucking up. They see that you might not even be a candidate for probation, which a lot of people just aren't. And they don't give a fuck because they want the fucking money. And so you go to jail, which is just a traumatic experience in itself. Like, trust me, just being away from your family and uh, having to, you can't wear the clothes that you want. Like, sometimes they'll give you clothes that just smell like fucking ass. And then people will think that you smell like shit. Uh, the food is fucking terrible. Uh, there's violence all around you. You know, you see, I, I, and I always talk about this. I remember being at a pre-release, which is supposed to be, like, uh, people that aren't dangerous and shit like that. But it's just, like, when you're talking about jail and convicts, and that's sort of Scandinavian country where they seem to have figured shit out where you could go and, like, people aren't violent and popping off all the time. But that's because they have good conditions up there. In over here, the conditions are fucking dog shit. They're fucking horrible. So people just want to pop off and fight someone, and you get respect from doing that. So one day, I was at a <clears throat> a low security place, and I go in the bathroom, and there is blood everywhere. I mean, on the floor, like all, like just all over the place. Like so, I could tell that someone was fighting, and and when people fight, they go in the bathroom to fight. That's where they would do it. And uh, at this fucking quote unquote low security place. People would fight in the bathroom, like, every fucking day. You'd go in there, you'd take a piss. Every, well, mine's Spokey K2, so I remember I would go in there. And that was the place where people would smoke K2. And the way that they were getting it in was basically they were spraying it on pieces of paper. And then using that paper to send in to inmates. And then people would roll up the balls of paper. They would tear it off, roll up the balls of little pieces, and smoke that. And it still smells like fucking incense, because that's what it was originally sold as. And that's what they were originally spraying it on. So basically, you go into the bathroom, 
and you know you go and you take a hit of k2 and the thing about k2 in jail is it makes you paranoid as fuck so you take a hit and then instead of like having a fun time like chilling and laughing with each other you go you lie in the bunk and basically just look like you're freaking out and we'd see people all the time come back for like they'd, they'd be like normal as shit they'd be like okay yo i gotta take a piss i'll be right back they go take a piss then they come back up and just don't even say anything to you and just get in their bunk and just like look crazy and then you're like oh, okay so there's smoke kid too out there but basically so you're already paranoid on this like crazy drug and then you're seeing fucking violence all around you and then you go and take a piss and there's fucking blood everywhere like on the walls so like i was saying someone definitely got hit like in their nose and was a nosebleed it was moving around and like slinging the fucking blood everywhere so it becomes a traumatic experience and then when you get out a lot of times your girlfriend is gone she fucking left you your apartment that's done fucking you weren't paying rent so they moved you out your family if you're on good terms with them, maybe we'll still talk to you. But a lot of times, they decide not to even want shit to do with you anymore. So basically, you're homeless, but you have to have an address to like go and do probation out of. And people try to like live like this and do this all the time, and it just doesn't work. And so that ends up extending their probation. And keep in mind, that whole time, they could have been doing the right thing. Going to meetings, getting sober, working the steps not living like an asshole and just trying to better themselves and then end up getting fucked anyways and them just being like you know what fuck this i'm gonna go out and i'm gonna do everything that they say that i'm doing anyways because when i'm not doing it they think that i am so why the fuck shouldn't i and that's a big problem and that's something that even i got caught up in myself because first of all at this time in my life i was heavily addicted to drugs and alcohol so even if I would stop doing heroin, I would start doing things like benzos, fucking psychedelics, which psychedelics really aren't that bad, let's be honest about it. And they wouldn't even pop for um, another drug anyways. But um, a lot of pills, uh, meth, and drugs like that. Like pretty much any other drug other than heroin because I looked at it as, oh, it's not as bad. You don't get physically addicted to it and whatever. So... Basically, I kept popping for other shit, and then they would extend my probation, extend my fees, and then when I finally got out of it, I'm like, you know what? It's time to start living good so I don't go back to that again, and then you start living right after probation, and basically, I did everything that I had to do for, prob for probation without even being on probation, because the whole idea that I could go to jail the next time that I go and having to do all this shit was so stressful that it was making me get high. And you could say, hey, but fringe YouTube creator, how come you were getting high in the first place? It sounded like anyone was forcing you into that. I would also again say, well, you know what? Fuck you. But uh, to like anyone that has ever done that and fucked up to their defense, it is a really difficult thing to do for a lot of people. And it seems like it's something that's simple. And that's why it's a trap. And when you're in jail and if you're withdrawing from opiates and shit like that and a lot of people come into jail where they have gang beefs and they have the gang that's in the same jail and then they know that they're going and they're gonna have to face off against them and so i saw that all the time people getting arrested that were gang members that were like these were hardcore fucking dudes that like literally took fucking guns on the street and shit like that and they would be in jail and they'd just be like pacing you know we'd be like in like the cell that they fucking put you in like while well, you're just getting ready to go and be like assigned a place to live and all that shit and they just be like fuck fuck you know like my enemy is in here i'm gonna see them um uh, they're like could be way bigger than them they could have knives already and so this person is going knowing that they're gonna have to at the very least fight possibly stab someone get stabbed or get jumped and what probably was gonna happen to them honestly if they were in that situation they would go to jail and they would get jumped by like everyone that's fucking already there in the gang that is clipped up because they haven't had a chance to meet their people yet. So imagine going through some shit like that and then coming out onto the streets and being told that you have to live like a fucking saint. So let me uh, do the other side of this because I like to sometimes run defense for a lot of the things that I say for fucking no reason. And I'll just make a whole video about some shit that I don't even fucking believe just to fucking be like oppositional 
Um, even though I'm not really like that um, anymore at all. You know, maybe when I was a young kid, but now I try to like choose my politics for some shit that I actually believe in, shit that I actually think is good. You know, which is why I, right now I'm talking about why I think that the probation thing is bad and why we need to redo the whole fucking justice system, quote unquote justice system. I think that the way that we treat people that um, are fucked up and have mental illness and are go and do something bad, I think that the way that we treat them is completely horrible. It's absolutely fucked up and it needs to be changed. So let me just say that. But I have seen pr people that went on probation and changed their lives, started going to meetings, um, got in recovery, got a good group of people, got a job, and then ended up stopped using drugs. And then they just live a normal life. And you know what I have to say about that? I say I'm all for that 100%. That's the best thing that I can see happen. And I really hope that if you get in this situation, that that's what happens to you. Because I don't want what happens to me that happened to anyone else. You know, I don't have that fucking boomer mentality or it's like, I did this and it was hard, so therefore you should have to go through it. You know what I'm saying? Which is basically the mindset that a lot of people have when they defend this system. That it was so hard on them and they had to do so much shit. When it just shows statistically that our generation, we have to go through more shit. It's harder to do, to do shit like get a mortgage, get a house, get enough money saved up to fucking do something. So you're not just like a slave for the rest of your life paying rent not knowing if you're going to make the next payment having to choose rent over food and shit like that but that's for a whole other story so anyways you'd say what is the solution for this and i talk about this all the time so i don't want to go into it too much on this video but what i would suggest would be something like the nordic model that they have in the scandinavian countries like norway sweden and denmark where it's more like they try to rehabilitate you as a criminal um, or as an addict, because in the United States, we barely have any of that. And you don't have to do it as a state. The states don't really make you do shit like that. So there's not really too much of an incentive to do that. But I could say this, um, states do shit differently. One state could have a rehabilitation type thing that they want to do. And another state could just be like straight up like they want to punish you. So that's that's something that I thought about when I was thinking about where I was going to live. I would think about, because at the time, I didn't want to change. And it wasn't like, I want to do illegal things. It was like, I'm addicted to heroin, and I don't want to stop. And therefore, every day, I need to do some shit to get money. And it's really hard to keep a job if you're on heroin on a regular basis. I see people that do it. I have good friends that do that right now and are just barely scraping by. Like, I don't know how they do it. I don't know how they fucking pay rent and get food and fucking take care of their family and do dope every day, working like a minimum wage job. And how they do that is basically just work like 12 hour shifts every fucking day, which just, it, it, re, it, it keeps that cycle of mental abuse and just, the most, you know, of, of anger and resentment and being tired and shit like that. Because a lot of these drugs, they give you energy. And it's one of the things that is a stereotype about heroin that is absolutely not true, is that it makes you tired. And yeah, if you do a lot, you will be nodding out. But if you do like a normal amount, you have a shitload of energy. And you want to go and you, you talk and talk and you want to like clean shit and do shit. And a lot of opiates are like that. And they give you that pep that you need to go through your workday and do everything that you're going to do. But if you do too much, you will start nodding out. But basically, that's something for another story. So I just want to say, fuck the probation system. I fucking have been through it in multiple places. And it's not done anything but fucked up my life. It was always extended. I always had to pay a shitload of money. And it always ended up just leaving me more scarred as a person than... You know, I'm glad that I went through the things that I did, 100%. But that said, I don't know if it just made me a stronger person or someone that has just been through a lot of shit, therefore has to be more resilient. But anyways, um, peace, fuck you.